Good morning. It is now day 10 of our consecutive everyday posting episodes. We've done a lot already under the waterline and we've been working with a lot of epoxy and Sikaflex and tar and so on. But as you can see, it is raining. I'm using this little Demonius shelter now, which we put up recently. Uh, yes, it can't be put any more forwards because the shrouds. It is quite refreshing this rain. We've had a lot of 35 up to 40 degrees Celsius weather. Okay, so I enough cannot... talking. Today is celebration day because it's Ben's birthday. Yay! I had a little lie in. I gave myself that. And we're going to leave a little bit earlier to get the barbecue ready. It just sucks that it rains. But we've been complaining so much about the heat, so yeah. we can't complain now. And now we have things to do inside, so it's fine. True. Bilge pumps require putting them in place, Wiring. having wiring, electricity, and also the holes that will pump the water out. So I there think, is a lot to do inside. I think we can make the holes. More holes. So many holes. Anyway, let's go. Let's go. The four bilge pumps we're going to use. We have two 24 volt rule bilge pumps, 3700 gallons, and then we have two short flow 2000 gallon ones. As the lowest part of the boat is in the engine room, the biggest, so the 3700 24 volts are going in the engine room. As the bow lock is a very small room, we're gonna put the a shore flow in there. Now under the staircase is the lowest area of the main living area. So we're gonna put a big one under the staircase. And just in case, for some reason, the boat is sloping forwards with water in the bow, we're gonna have one under our beds just on the other side of the wall of the bow locker as well. So that makes four. We'll probably have some more in spare. We can always move them around later, but I think this is the best way to do it. So we're gonna have these, we're gonna have a flood alarm, we're gonna have uh, automatic uh, the floating switches as well as a manual switch up here at the helm. So we can really choose what we do. They are not going to be attached to the 24 volt panel because when we switch the 24 volt panel off, we want them still to be connected to the batteries. There was some leftover varnish and there's always something that's missing some, so here I am. Look at that. Is varnishing this needed to go to the water? No, but installing bilge pump is, and then as we're putting the switches there, we might as well varnish, and then I made too much, so as I have some left over, I might as well go to other places, and so on. So now, I see myself doing this very non-important job, but it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, we weren't going to do any varnishing or anything, but the bilge pump switches are going to go on there. We don't want to put the switches on and have to remove the switches to varnish. But that's just something super quick. It will it will dry during this. And P's opening, unlocking that from the inside. Super easy now with the pistons. There we go. Hello. First pump. Here. I already put the screws underneath it Love so you it. can have take a it apart. Are you pumped about this? Here. So before they were here, I believe it's the lowest bit. I mean, it the is lowest the lowest accessible bit. bit. Yeah. I think it's the lowest bit. Yeah. So this is it. Okay. So all you need to do is drill, put that in, and clip it in. Easy peasy. Where do you see this going out? That way. Because here we have this. Okay, this way. Yeah, good. Nice. Nice and safe next to the cardan. <laughs> There's no other way. It is the lowest bit, what can we do? We are here playing around with the position of the pump. If you want the outlet to be that way or this way and all that. Unfortunately, that's all that we can actually play around because the lowest place that we can access is this one. This is where the bilge pump lived before. We, I don't know if you know this, but when we bought Yaba, we lived on board 
when she was sinking for three months until we got here so for three months we had the pump here and even though we know it's under a shaft and it's not ideal it worked for us and it is the lowest point it's where it has to go so we're gonna install it there again and all we have to choose is that way or that way this here is the sapinho we call it like that in portuguese which means little frog and it's the automatic we'll attach it next to the pump and when water starts going up this floats until it clicks can you hear that Play again. Yeah. and that click sends the signal for this to start and where's it gonna go pumping something like that yeah can it go all the way out without getting caught two holes now and then we're done with this and this bilge pump is officially installed well officially installed in my standards is something else which means in place with electrics and a hose going out through a through hole sorry love this will be in place then done It's not going anywhere. Very easy access over here. Yes, this is a spinny part, but it, and PP to the yellow so no one can get hurt here. All the wires will come here or even on top of this, nicely fastened so nothing will get stuck. And the electronical panel is right up there, not an issue, all nice and close. We just need to pull a hose up there, drill a hole, and then this one's done. But I think we're going to put the other three in place first. I'm going to do all the holes, all the hose connectors, all the valves. It doesn't have a valve, all the hose connectors, and then. Uh, Hoses. Then we can say they're done. Let's go to the next one. I had an idea for us to be more efficient. I think it will be better this way. Ben will continue installing the other pumps going forwards, and I'll stay here with my dad to start making this pump that's just screwed in place actually work. So we're gonna work on the electrics of it, and then when Ben finishes that one, we can go into the electrics of the one, then he can go to the next one where we do the electrics of the second one and so on and I think this way will be more efficient with our time and our team efforts. Let's see if our planning actually comes to reality. But my dad and I are here, ready to start the electrics. And Pierre and Orlando are going to connect the one in the engine room already because that's in place. All they need is wiring while I work my way forwards putting more bilge pumps. The next bilge pump is going to be right in front of this bulkhead. We made it well, the goal is that it's a uh, watertight one, so all the water that runs down ends up here. And this is a big area, so we're going to put another 3,700 gallons uh, rule pump. And then we've got two in the bow, one by the wall over there, which is going to be the slightly smaller uh, shore flow one, and then an another shore flow in front of the other bulkhead. So let's just get these stairs up. This is. These stairs will be made a lot easier to lift and a lot safer, but for now this is what we have. Lift up the floor, literally put the screws in, the floaty thingy, automatic switch, and then uh, move forwards. I just gave it a very quick wash while it was open anyway, quick vacuum. Can't wait to just fill this build with salt water to give it all good rinse, throw everything outside to just have it all nice and, well, it will never be really clean, but you know what I mean. Anyway, this pump is going in. I need to see if we have the little Sabinos because this is here, 16 amps, and those are 14 amps switches so we might have to go and get some more but let's put this in place already i think as we've got one through hole coming up that way we'll put the other one this way 
just so they're not all, you know, like piled up together. So, bilge pump going out that way now. For now we only have 14 amp switches. This one needs at least 16 amps, so we're gonna not use this one. Also the cables, have you seen how short this is? And it's used, we wanna have everything nice and secure and fail proof, 100%. So we're gonna leave this one here. I'm gonna shut the floor already, shut the ladder or the stairs. It won't squish this wide, don't worry, it sits on top. This one's slightly lower. And then I'll go to the third bilge pump. about to start the installation of the pump but before we were discussing how we want to do it because the pump is a bit different than other devices that we have on the boat every device so far we bring the positive bring it the negative and then that's it but the pump it is a little bit different because we want it to be able to work alone without us having to turn a switch on or off so why is all this different of course what does the pump do pumps water out the boat. We don't want that to happen only if we are aware of it. So that's why it needs to work automatically. But we also want to have the option to make it work manually if we ever want to pump it with the button. That's why the switches are made like this already. There is the auto function. You just put the switch that way and it work automatically. But there's also the manual that while you're holding it, it is pumping when you let go. That's it. So we're going to make this switch works. So how is it here at the pump? I know this might look like something very different that you've never seen before if you're not really into boats but that is just like the switch that we use for the light you know when we turn the switch on the light goes on the switch off the light goes off just like that but this one the way to activate it is by floating so what it does is it will have the power to it all the time and what will make it turn on is the water level going up and making that float and then when it clicks it's on and you'll send the signal to the pump so the pump will have one positive going straight to the button to work manually and then the automatic one will go through that switch because it works as a switch and then to the pump we don't want the connections to be underwater so we're gonna bring them up and then from there up there to our panel where the switches will be. I come bearing bad news. Well, it's not that bad. This type of pump won't work under our beds. We've got so much ballast down there and the keelson is in the way that we're gonna get a different type of pump for just that region, which is good because it leaves us one of these spare. So it's good to have a spare or put it in another area. We're gonna get one of those pumps that has an in and outlet so that we can put the pump slightly higher and have a hose going down to the center of the boat so that we don't need to be I don't need an arm extension to reach the area where the bilge pumps has to go to screw it on so yeah we're just gonna wait with that one gives us one spare we'll go shopping probably maybe tomorrow right even maybe anyway ASAP and we'll get a different type of bilge pump and then I'm gonna head over to the bow locker now to add one of these to the bow lock and I hope it's a lot easier but it probably won't be because I can already imagine it but we'll uh, go and have let's go and have a look so one of the switch will go straight with a positive to the automatic button and the other one will be connected giving power to the pump so when the automatic gives it the pump can receive it and then the positive of the pump this one will also come here and this third one that I still have available will be the manual one so here is the positive of the pump the pump will always receive power through this one it might be or from the automatic here to the switch or from this wire that goes straight to the manual switch so what I want to do here is have a waterproof box that's worry free that we can put the wires in and even if it's underwater it shouldn't be a problem they'll be in there 
very safe and then continue I know the box I want but I still don't have it in my hand so I'm just gonna keep that in my mind imagining here and I'll continue from there when I know exactly the length of the wires I can even use one of these to protect them for now it was just to see the length this black one which is the negative is coming here to a negative bus bar they were having in the engine room so we can use the sensors for the diesel tanks for the engine everything and then the other two positive ones red and brown are going up through this hole all the way to the switch up there which I think it's where we're going to I'm just coming out quickly for some fresh air under the bed it's hot and in the bow locker it's not going to be any better um, I've realized even though it was raining before and it's drizzling now under here it's completely dry so I might actually get these two through holes in today and then uh, what else is left then we've only got a few more to go, to go and as it's dry Mita and Nico are over here and they're finishing the caulking I think there's what two and a half meters to go hardly I think it's going to finish in guys you know yeah. And Nico's over there finishing, going out over with some caulking compound. Finally got this bow locker empty. It was so full. Got a fan in here. It's also very, very humid in here because we still don't have the vent in the hatch. But uh, we can definitely fit this bilge pump here. See the hose pointing towards there so we can still attach it. However, I'm going to have to make a support that sits on top of the keel. It's going to cover a bit, but uh, yeah, and just put it right here. It's still at a very, very, very low point. I'd rather have a bilge pump in here, and that's the only way I can see it working. Well, either one side of this, but I'm going to do that. Make a little support, fasten that down, and install this one. Very simple, what is it? 36 centimeters by eight centimeter plank. Just literally a support that I can fasten that bilge pump onto. Let's go and find some wood in the shed, if not, and grab some of this purple heart that's under the boat. I've got the plank over here, it's nice and solid and thick. I'm gonna put four, maybe even five screws on here. This bit over here will be sticking out and that's where the bilge pump's gonna go on. A bit higher than the lowest point, but I'm sure if a lot of water comes in, uh, this will definitely be pumped out. And so let's put this in for now. Of course, I also think boat sailing is problem solving. So as we're sailing, we'll make lots of adaptations for now. This is the best I can think of with what we have. 
Yeah. The floor is all liftable, everything is inspectable. I made this as thin as possible also, so you can see next to it, so I didn't want to fill the whole area. And that's why we, I chose the strong, it's IP, IPE, with a little hat on the E, if you want to look up what wood this is. And now uh, let's put this in place. bilge pump out of four is in place now what's really cool is what Shoreflow did is once you fasten it in place the pump can still rotate it's like a little not a bearing but so you can still choose if you want to oh no the hose is a bit tight you know and then you just it just twists I didn't see if rule did that but uh very cool this is in place the fourth one we're gonna have to wait for because we're gonna have to go and buy it next steps are through holes and hoses, however, there's two through holes in the boat or holes in the boat that I still have to fill. They're the ones from yesterday from the grey water, no, from the toilet of the port forwards uh, bathroom. So I'm going to just quickly put those through holes in. It's dried up loads now. And then I'm going to maybe see if there's any time left. How much I have to leave in one hour. So I'll definitely put those through holes in and then let them cure. Tomorrow I can clean all the through holes up. I need to clean up all the through holes anyway. It's going really well, it's very hard. I'm going to turn this on again. Also, I've got all this to put back in, but that shouldn't take much time. Nico can maybe help me out. I'm going to put all the floor planks in again. Uh, the one place we didn't fix the caulking is the roof of that hatch, which is what Nico's working on now. And then we should have a completely watertight boat, except for those two holes where water can get in. So let's close them. you could never have too much but I just proved that wrong and anyway, I'm gonna tighten it from the inside and I'll come out here and uh, clean it all up They are pretty tight. I didn't want it. I think it's got like another half or three quarters of a turn left. I'm going to do that, however, when it's dry. I think that's the way. I hope that's the way. And uh, then we have two more underwater through holes, which makes that three. Got two more on the other side to go and one more transducer. And then that's literally the underwater part of the boat done.
continue with the pump switches. I just want to show you one thing. Wait, I'm gonna turn around. Here, the other day, when I was trying to make this work, I was missing the negative, so it didn't work, and then I just wanted it to work, so I did an improv bus bar inside the panel here, but I knew from then that that wasn't official. Now we have the official one here. This little bo box will have positive and negative in different bus bars. You can see the negative is here, the positive is in the back. This positive wire, pay attention to this bit, it's coming straight from the battery. It's not going through any other thing. It's straight to the bus bar, the positive bus bar of the battery because we want to be able, if we're leaving the boat, I don't know, alone for a week, we want to shut the system off, but we want to leave the pump on at all times. So this little bus bar here will have power all the time straight from the battery for things that we think that are important to leave on. So positive here, straight from the battery, here, straight from the battery, and the negative is coming from the panel. And then from here, we're gonna spread wires everywhere. As you can see, we have one already here that is for these lights. Remember, I installed that there as an improv, so now it's here. This negative one goes there, there, there. Follow, 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 and the light. So this one is here already, and now we're gonna start bringing the pumps here. My first step, now that this varnish is dry, we are going to bring the switch pumps and install them in place. And then we're gonna bring the wires to them. You see, we had them, these came with a bolt, but unfortunately these are 12 volts, so we need, needed to get new ones. These ones are 24, 32 volts, so this is what we need now with our new system and the pumps we have. So, yeah, you see we have four of them and we're going to have four pumps and it's in the same order. We are about to install those wires that we came all the way through and sent up to the switches so the pump can finally have power. It's always good to read the manual because if you see here, the manual wire goes in the auto position <laughs> and the other way around. So I wouldn't have guessed that. It's quite counterintuitive, but I read the manual, so I'm gonna do it right. Manual. Get up. Yeah. Nice. Auto's on. I lift this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sinking anymore. Uh, it just feels so good when things work. I think this is a good moment to end the episode with this huge victory. Do you guys agree? You know what she said? Here, so I can be a bit taller. We have one problem though. Why? We have people coming in two hours and we haven't even been to the shops yet. That's not a problem. It's good to have it's people good. over because we're celebrating your life. But sorry, we have to end this episode now. Thank you so much for watching. And P and Orlando did an amazing job. They I did, did an too. okay job. No. You still need to test them, of course, because my job now depends on them. Yeah, so if the bilge pumps don't work, it's all their fault. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Did you like it? Yes? Okay, then click that like button. And uh, don't forget to subscribe so you stay up to date with all our videos. and. When are we seeing them next? Tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. Congrats, Amor. Congrats to you. Happy birthday. Para ventra vos. Querida, muitas felicidades, muitos anos de vida. Vida bem.